Understanding of life begins with the understanding of its patterns. In fact, a change just in the pattern of our breath changes our mind and life. Every time we breathe, it's an expression of our innermost self. But what if this organ, the lung, which infuses life, falls prey to cancer? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Dr. Tapaswini's corner. That's me, and I work as a head and neck oncosurgeon at Fortis Hospital. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death worldwide in men and the second leading cause of cancer death in women. To discuss the various issues pertaining to this subject, we have our expert today, Dr. Kumar Prabhash. You are the professor and head of the Department of Medical Oncology at the Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai. Having trained yourself from the Rajiv Gandhi University and Health Sciences, Bangalore, and also from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, Seattle, you have more than 16 years of experience in this field. An academician par excellence with more than 200 publications in the national and international journals, you have significant contribution in the field of lung and head and neck cancers. Several clinical trials and scientific projects have been carried out under your supervision at your center. Welcome Dr. Kumar Prabhash to the program. It's indeed a pleasure to have you on the show today. Uh, hi, uh, Dr. Tapashwini. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure to be uh, part of this program and uh, thank you for inviting me for this program. So India sees more than 1 million cases of cancer every year. So how does the statistics of lung cancer read vis-a-vis -vis the other cancers in the world and in India? What you suggested was absolutely right. That is around uh, uh, 1 million uh, cancers are uh, diagnosed every year in India. Right. But for lung cancer, that number is around 70,000 odd in India. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that puts it uh, behind the head and neck cancer in men as the commonest cancer. Now, if you put this number in a one other way, that what is the incidence per 100,000? And that is around 60 plus in uh, US or in Western world as compared to eight or nine in India. Okay. Suggesting that it is one of the commonest cancer in men in India, but as compared to Western world, right. the number and the risk of the patient getting this cancer is uh, lesser in our population. So who are these high risk patients? The most important factor is the patients or the people who smoke. Uh, we do have some other factors. I'll come back to smoking after enumerating some factors. So you have a people exposed to radon. Okay. So for example, people having uh, stones and bricks, which we use it to make houses mm -hmm. and radon in the air, they get trapped. And okay. we do get exposed to radon for years altogether. Apart from that, people working in areas right. where they get exposed to asbestos, but they get exposed to chromium. So if they get exposed to these things in a mm -hmm. place they work or they live, then again, they get predisposed to lung cancers. Okay. Apart from that, people who receive radiotherapy in chest area for some other reason. Right. For example, breast cancer. Then again, they have more chance of having a you know, lung cancer. Mm -hmm. There is some evidence that if the family members have lung cancer, okay. then some predisposition for lung cancer in the family. Okay. But that looks primarily because of the environment you are in, because the family lives in the same house, where you have a smoking happening, where your radon is there. So that may be the reason why if you see in family, you have a cancer and some other family also member gets lung cancer. Some group of patients where you do have hereditary, hereditary lung cancer. Okay. Apart from that, don't forget the diet that when people were given beta carotene and they were smoking, the lung cancer number increased. What is the percentage of uh, lung cancers which is attributed to smoking? Majority of the lung cancer, 90 out of 100 lung cancer, mm -hmm. by and large is because of smoking. Trend okay. is changing a bit. It looks like now almost 20 to 30 of them, they are because of non-smokers, but then also the number remains 70 to 80 of lung cancer is because of smoking. What it means is if you do smoking, 
the chance that you get lung cancer becomes almost 20 to 30 times higher as compared to who is not a smoker. It remains a bit less, but similar for second hand, hand smoking, meaning that I may be smoking, You're right. but if my kid is around, he's getting the smoke. Correct. And he or she also gets higher chance of getting lung cancer and the risk mm -hmm. increases by 20 to 30%. Mm -hmm. There's something called third hand smoking. Correct. Meaning that the smoked and the mm -hmm. smoke particles that remains in the clothes which is hanging around and somehow subsequently people living in that house, they inhale it. Right. And again, you also have a higher chance of lung cancer as compared to normal population. So uh, I think a little uh, more detail that we would love to know is, uh, does it depend upon how much you know, number of uh, packs that an individual smokes or the age at which it was initiated? Or at times we get to hear there are some filtered, non-filtered cigarettes in the market. And there's a description of the amount of nicotine which it's, uh, you know, the cigarettes contain. So are these factors which influence how easily an individual can get, fall prey to cancer, lung cancer especially? Uh, the, and a very useful uh, uh, question, uh, because if we want to understand lung cancer, we need to know smoking. Uh, right. I know, and this uh, information is useful for people to decipher how good or bad is tobacco and smoking. True. So, yes, uh, first of all, we need to uh, 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 I know, remember and uh, the take home message should be, any smoking is bad. Correct. A single cigarette a day also disposes lung cancer. Now, having said that, mm -hmm. more the number of cigarettes we take, the more the chances of a cancer happens. And in fact, there is some definitions for when we, how do we define heavy smokers? So we call it 25 cigarettes a day. If we take or more, we call it heavy smokers. But mm -hmm. again, coming back, a single cigarette also predisposes to lung cancer. Subsequently, what is the age? Earlier you start, more you're going to smoke for life, more All the right. chance of having lung cancer. The content part, so we divide into two parts, nicotine and tar. Nicotine mm -hmm. doesn't predispose to cancer, but it makes you addicted to a uh, you know, cigarette. Absolutely. Tar, tar is the toxic part. That's the right. toxic chemical which is there in the cigarette and right. which predisposes us to uh, uh, lung cancer. And that mm -hmm. contains chemicals, almost 72 of them has been identified, which is worse mm -hmm. than the chemicals what we see in the bathrooms. But mm -hmm. yes, they do predispose to uh, uh, no, uh, lung cancer. People agree, any amount of tar is bad. So dividing them in this different group doesn't help in understanding that if you take lesser amount of tar, uh, with the cigarette with lesser amount of tar, you're going to get less number of cancer. No, the cancer mm -hmm. predisposition remains the same in this uh, patients. People try to divide filtered and non-filtered, but again, doesn't look like it help. You uh -huh. take a filtered cigarette or non-filtered cigarette, looks uh -huh. like predisposition to lung cancer remains the same. Oh. So cigarette is bad in any form, almost Correct. any number. Yes, that's the message which should go to the audience. But uh, Dr. Kumar, we often hear our patients uh, lamenting that cancer struck only after I stopped smoking. What would be your comments be on this? I agree. These are very important uh, uh, comments we get from our uh, society uh, members and our many times patients. Right. And uh, we need uh, to uh, understand why it happens. People stop smoking after years of taking it. The damage to the lung has happened or they stop it because they do get incapacitated because of some other damage to the other organ part which forced them to stop smoking. Correct. But that doesn't mean the damage which has happened that gets reverted completely. The process of uh, an old cell becoming a cancerous cell has happened when they started smoking initially. Right. So how many years does it take for the risk to fall? Mm -hmm. Suppose somebody has just stopped and somebody has stopped for 15, 20 years. Is this risk the same or does it change with time? Smoking does cause lung cancer, okay. but also 
good number of people die because of many other organ damage which happens because of smoking. Absolutely correct, right? So once we have stopped smoking, the mm-hmm. benefit to the patient, as far as the overall body is concerned, it starts immediately. Blood pressure uh, bec- becoming better, overall uh, body physiology better. That happens immediately, and as the time goes by, it keeps improving. it suggest as far as the cardiac risk and many other risk to the body part is concerned they do become far better after maybe a decade or decade and a half the lung cancer risk also goes down unfortunately lung cancer risk never becomes totally normal to the population some part of it remains in your body which maintains the little bit of risk for your lung cancer otherwise uh, you know when we are trying to encourage our patients to quit smoking there are different ways that we adopt one of them which was instituted was uh, use of e-cigarettes but does this e-cigarette also have negative impact on the system so uh, this is a uh, you know one of those uh, important event in the society which happens where science doesn't play a part and what science says for e-cigarette that e-cigarette mm-hmm. ha- is a mixture of things not well defined many of them has nicotine many of them has heavy metals many of them has particles and many of them has flavoring agent right all of them can damage the lung so e-cigarette doesn't help in uh, uh, stopping smoking in fact it le- what i can say that it uh, you stop uh, one addiction and you, yeah. it has led to another addiction and damage to the body remains similar correct correct now uh, uh, talking something beyond smoking you know we look at our changing landscape of the urban and the rural society so how do you think it has really made urbanization commercialization how has it it impacted this disease so uh, urbanization uh, uh, has had a impact uh, mm-hmm. not as big as uh, i'll say breast cancer uh, where urbanization led to a lot of lifestyle changes true here yes there is a lifestyle change because of urbanization two important thing happens here uh, one is yes there is a more chance of people smoking in cities as compared mm-hmm. to in a rural area yeah. second part is that uh, pollution is definitely far worse than cities as compared to rural areas mm-hmm. and these two things uh, yes leads to uh, you know more chance of having you uh, uh, know lung cancer in urban area as compared to a rural, rural area right so in the rural setting we have uh, you know wood burning and the coal burning as a fuel for you know making of food and everything is still uh, is prevalent So does this also uh, have some influence uh, yes uh, i know any kind of uh, pollution where your particles uh, which gets into uh, in the lung and they get deep seated there it increases the chance of uh, lung cancer if you use wood the chances of lung cancer increases 2 to 3 times smoking mm-hmm. it increases by 30 times that's the reason the difference in the number in rural and urban area but what you uh, highlighted was very important that yes avoiding the use of pollutant inside house in various form it will lead to decrease in the lung cancer in these areas and this is one of the important risk factor there right very well said dr kumar but million dollar question how does one know that one has lung cancer what are the signs and symptoms there are a uh, uh, you know no very specific classical signs and symptom but some of the things which we need to remember uh, when we can think about uh, lung cancer if you are a smoker uh, 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 and you have been smoking for some time mm. and if you have a cough which is uh, persisting uh, not going with the, your regular treatment right. uh, hemoptysis that is the blood in the system and it is coming and uh, coming and going and not going away completely in you uh, know i'll say let's put it two weeks if you have uh, some unknown weight loss okay. you have some unknown symptoms of uh, you know pain in the bony area you uh, 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 know some back then which is not going away it is important that these can be uh, signs and symptoms of uh, lung cancer it is good to talk to your doctor if you have these symptoms right 
but there was uh, decades ago you know when tuberculosis was so prevalent and even we get to see it very common in it's so common in our country so how does one differentiate between the two tuberculosis and lung and often it gets confused it is still relevant in developing countries uh, autopsy suggests that almost 70% of the people mm-hmm. have uh, tuberculosis somewhere in the body when they died because of lung cancer so looks like they do coexist in mm-hmm. fact one in five patients we found that they had delayed in treatment because it was thought that the symptoms what patient had because of tuberculosis that all the symptoms which i talked about hemoptosis mm-hmm. fever weight loss these right. are all the symptoms which we can get in tuberculosis and also in you know lung cancer one of the mm-hmm. important aspect to remember should be especially the physicians that if you have afb negative right chest tuberculosis be very uh, careful be very doubtful and especially if the patient is not responding for initial 3 to 4 weeks of akt then the chances of us missing the lung cancer will be far lesser okay so other than tuberculosis are there other benign diseases uh, which increase the risk of lung cancer so tuberculosis uh, the way it increases the chance of lung cancer is inflammation and uh, yes we do have uh many diseases which mm-hmm. leads to uh, in- inflammation in uh, lung and uh, we do have copd having a past uh, pneumonia the risk uh, which in- increases it is around 2 to 3 times as the number of non smokers having lung cancer increases these other factors becomes important right so uh, when we look at uh, cancers as a whole uh when we talk of distant metastases which means uh, where does the cancer spread other than its own site of origin and it's generally the lung so when we have cancer in the lung where does it go where does it spread what are the various areas that it has a distant spread i agree lung is a very notorious to get cancer from other places mm. and lung cancer is also very notorious to go far and wide and very right. unfortunate but that's the reality Mm-hmm. in fact almost uh, majority of the lung cancer they present uh, you know when the disease has already gone far and wide majority mm-hmm. of the time it goes to from one lung to other lung mm-hmm. then the next uh, uh, subsequent site where it goes to bone uh, then liver then brain mm-hmm. adrenal almost every part of the body it can go apart from the the sites i mentioned which are the commonest uh, site where it can go so the other day i was reading this book titled when breath becomes air by dr paul kalaniti you know neurosurgeon himself a doctor himself and he's being diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer and he succumbs to it so how true is it that the lung cancers are actually detected late you are absolutely right uh, you know in saying that uh, lung cancer usually uh, gets detected late mm-hmm. i'll put some number to get a hang of it and then compare uh, you know our population as compared to western population dr uh, kalaniti he got detected in stage 4 and right. uh, that too in one of the he himself was a neurosurgeon in west of the center he had a back ache uh, already he had a stage 4 disease but in spite of stage 4 disease it got delayed by months because the back ache was thought of as having some benign back ache yeah. highlighting that don't ignore the symptoms if they are persisting Hmm. now coming to those numbers the early stage lung cancer Correct. that is stage 1 2 and 3 uh, that constitutes almost around 50% suggesting that almost 50% present in stage 4 mm-hmm. now if you see the western world uh, almost 30% of the lung cancer surgery happens now okay. let's uh, know see the number in india only 6 to 7% of our lung cancer gets operated 70% of our patients they present in you know a stage 4 disease or a stage 3b disease where you can't do much and uh, that mm-hmm. we treat with palliative intent uh, right. the, the example we gave the way dr kalanathi was uh, you know treated mm-hmm. suggesting that there is huge unmet need of picking up patients early in lung cancer in western world and also in our world in fact in our world first we need to work on to see can we reach this 30% or 
or 25% of the lung surgery which happens there and that okay. requires awareness and yeah. sending the patient to the right clinician if you're looking at the treatment as you've been describing what would be the ideal treatment in a, an early lung and an advanced lung cancer for coming to treatment one more uh, factor i wanted to emphasize so okay. lung cancer happens in lung uh, which is inside the thoracic cavity which can accommodate almost 6 liter of fluid so when the the tumor grows it has a capacity to grow without causing symptoms and that is what leads to this uh, chance of disease going all across uh, the body before we detect it so mm -hmm. that factor we can't uh, circumvent today uh, uh, i know we do have some screening which we'll be discussing later but right. we have a limited role there but we do have a role to play if there are symptoms are there mm -hmm. coming to the uh, treatment part for early stage we can remove the tumor uh, that's the best thing to do in these patients and based on the report of after tumor is removed that is surgery we can uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy okay but another aspect is is very important that good number of lung cancer patients in early stage they right. can't undergo surgery because of their general condition in okay. that situation you have a good radiotherapy which mm -hmm. can be given and which can control the disease very well in this setting and we call it by the name of sbrt it's primarily a precision based radiotherapy but dr prabhash in patients where the disease we feel is incurable do we have anything to offer for them any palliative uh, measures do we take for them if you have asked me this question around 20 years back i would have said right. mm, yeah, hardly any okay. but today's time there are uh, promising a lot of good treatment okay so if you take uh, put a number to it in this advanced stage disease patients if you would have treated the patients around uh, 20 years back the average life of these patients if it was around 6 to 8 months mm -hmm. in 50% of them where we can do some special marker and give them treatment based on the marker then the average life of these patients are around 4 to 5 years now Oh. i we are not curing them but it becomes okay. promising from 6 to 8 months to almost 50 to 60 months for these patients so that becomes a useful change in these patients and this is what we call targeted therapy uh, second promising development has been that if you these uh, uh, genetic markers are negative or mutations mm -hmm. are negative okay. and you can give immunotherapy to these patients then in the past if uh, uh, you know only 5 out of 100 patient is to survive beyond 5 years there is a chance that 30 out of 100 patient will survive beyond 5 years uh, i won't say that this is miracle but this is a promising development for lung cancer in recent past lovely but lung cancer vis-a-vis -vis other cancers now if you look at the fact sheet of uh, lung cancer and its survival 5 year survival of lung cancer patient vis-a-vis -vis other cancers what are your comments on it so uh, lung cancer is uh, one of those cancer which has got one of the uh, worst it is uh, uh, better than what it was but now mm -hmm. also it remains worse in fact if you want to uh, uh, club it uh, uh, together it, the number of patient who dies because of lung cancer is more than clubbing the prostate cancer the mm -hmm. uh, no breast cancer uh, the uh, stomach cancer Uh, right. the head and neck cancer if we club all of them together more number of uh, you know uh, patients dies because of lung cancer so prognosis is poor okay uh, yes what i talked about that it is improving as compared to what it was 15 20 years back so lot many a lot much work to be done in lung cancer to improve outcome right i understand what are the advancements that we can talk of pertaining to treatment of this particular disease in recent 15 years there has been a significant development in uh, many spheres of uh, lung cancer management okay if we take in uh, screening we have some better screening technologies uh, which can detect it early if we take in uh, uh, you know uh, in uh, from surgery side there has been better supportive care and now okay. because of uh, you know using of call minimal access surgery a uh, patient requires uh, a lesser uh, requires for admission okay in radiation oncology you have a better technology 
like what we call precision uh, radiation oncology mm-hmm. uh, imrt or sbrt that has had an impact in improving uh, the outcome especially the quality of life and in good number of patient which i suggested where surgery was not possible they didn't have any hope now there is a good hope for them because of better technology of radiotherapy which has come you know in these patients right subsequently palliative care uh-huh. uh we had not understood the importance of it in the past mm-hmm. now we understand that uh, you know having a comprehensive palliative care assessment of these patients that leads to a better outcome in on these patients there has been a very good understanding of genetic changes in these patients treating the patients based on genetic changes in this has also led to a significant improvement you uh, know uh, in lung cancer patients and immunotherapy its combinations and its sequencing has uh, had a, a significant impact you uh, know in outcome for these patients let's not forget the diagnostics pet ct oh. has helped us in selecting the patient for a uh, curative t- treatment better than what we have been doing in the past some better technology like liquid biopsy to mon- to find out how we can monitor these patients better you know uh, people often hear a lot about transplants renal transplant lung transplant transplant of the various organs can this be an answer for treatment of lung cancer so if i have to answer in one line i'll say no but mm-hmm. i'm sure our audience wants to know a bit uh people have tried uh, you know uh, transplant in lung cancer somehow as we have understood in the uh, discussion in last uh, you know uh, almost 40 minutes or is that lung cancer is a very aggressive disease and right. lung transplant it is a major you uh, uh, know intervention it has got mm-hmm. a major morbidity Mm-hmm. and what people found that if you do lung transplant in uh, you know lung cancer patient two third of them they come back but in routine care lung mm-hmm. transplant for lung cancer no no okay but then where where is it possible in which conditions uh, are these uh, surgical procedures recommended lung cancer which doesn't which remains in alveoli it never infiltrates mm-hmm. okay and it can't be treated with our regular surgery it is bilateral so right. you know require balanced pneumonectomy for them uh, then yes in those situation one can think about it otherwise benign diseases which leads okay. to uh, you know lung damage that is where uh, lung transplant is definitely uh, okay. you know recommended mm-hmm. but lung cancer usually i'll say uh, this option should not be considered okay so what we understand from the whole talk that This is a disease which has poor survival figures it's generally diagnosed late presentation as we said is mostly in an advanced stage so what in your perspective would the screening have a role in diagnosing and detecting this disease early how to pick them early people okay. are trying various ways something which has been found to be useful at this moment has been low dose ct scan in the patients who are heavy smokers then you pick them early and if you do pick them early you do decrease the mortality in these patients by lung cancer uh, you know by approximately around 20% so it is useful in these segment of these patients there are various modification which is being tried people are trying to integrate liquid biopsy to see that ct scan number goes down and we pick them more patients but as on date low dose ct scan remains a part of a routine care but what i want to highlight here is uh, that in indian population sure at this moment we don't have a you know any a comprehensive screening program for lung cancer mm-hmm. but opportunistic we should always be thinking about it but more important than that in western world the lung resection for you uh, know for lung cancer has been around 20% and above without screening okay. we are stuck at 4 to 5% so mm-hmm. we can increase that without screening also if it comes good if we can implement uh, great but before that sure many of us including the audience can increase the awareness about lung cancer and that may increase the detection of early stage cancer which may increase the chance of potential cure of these patients by many fold 
Absolutely. I fully agree with you. What a wonderful talk, Dr. Kumar. The golden thread of highly meaningful and successful life is self-discipline. In fact, what we experience in our day-to-day -day life is not the fruit of chance, but a fruit from seeds planted in the past. Each puff on a cigarette is another tick, closer to a time bomb with terrible consequences. But the choice is ours. We are all authors to our own life stories. Thank you so much, Dr. Kumar. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you once again and see you next week with another episode. Till then, goodbye.